Hello and welcome back to another video in our video series on Excel Draw version 4. In the previous video we were able to look at the graphing options and the drawing manager and look at all the different options for graphing our objects. In this video what I'm going to be covering is our settings tab and our layers tab. And we're going to be able to look at some of the features in there. Now the first thing that you may notice in the settings tab is this button right here called the graph settings. Inside of this you will find a, another window right here which will give you all the different kind of formats. This is your default chart name which you it won't really matter for most cases because most of the times you're going to be exporting this into AutoCAD or pictures or something like that but if you ever want to change your chart names this is how you can do that now from here down the point line rectangle circle and text formats all of these are how you can set up your input values so it's by default set up as x1, y1, z1, x2, y2, and z2 for all the values, but you can change these around to anything that you want them to be. I leave them at the default because that's what most people use, but if you want to change it, you can. The object colors are right here, so you can actually drop down, you can change the different line, uh, rectangle, circle, point, arch, you can change the different colors of them. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to change the rectangle and if I click change it comes up with another window right here and you can change whatever that color is to another color of your choice so if I want to change it to something kind of like a purple like that or you have preset colors right down here that you can change it to you can hit change and whenever you refresh your graph the rectangles are going to be changed to that purple color the line size is also something you can adjust here you can adjust your number format which is uh, how many decimal points that you want with your drawing. You can also adjust your text size and the text size by default is set to 4. This is AutoCAD default text size so you can go all the way up to 25 if you want which is some fairly large text. And then you have all these other options here with the layer settings. So I will get to those in a minute. So I'm going to go ahead, I already changed my rectangle, I'm going to hit save settings and I'm going to close out. Now if I go up to regenerate my graph you can see that my rectangles are actually going to change color. And there we have it. So the rectangle changed color. I actually had to adjust the uh, zoom rotation right there a little bit so we could see it better. But yes, the rectangles change color to the purple. Okay, so that's in the graph settings. Next is the relative values. Now default this is turned off because most people don't really use relative values. It's useful in some cases but for the most part you are going to be using absolute values and that's what these values are right here. An absolute value means that you are to, you are putting the x, y, and z coordinates of the absolute location which means it starts at this point and it ends at this point. A relative value means that you can say I want this rectangle to go so many uh, dimensions this way so it's relative to what it was previously. That's what relative values are. Z values enable, we've already covered that. Auto update cells. Now this will work if you have Excel Draw installed into a tab. So you go to file and add-ins and you start with installing Excel into an add-in. I do not have that right now. I actually just have Excel Draw open for testing. So if you have it installed you can actually select the auto update sales and whenever you update one of these cells it will automatically update on the graph but like I said I currently don't have that option because I don't have it installed. Now this is something new to version 4 which is the style. In the style you actually have three different options for the styles. You have classic, light, and dark. Light is on by default and what the style is if we go over to our graph orientation or bring up any window at all you can see that there, the stylized look looks like this. That is our light style. Now if you want to change this to a dark style I'll go ahead and I'll open up the graph orientation again so you can see it. The dark style will obviously look like a darker style of that window and all the windows have that option available. There's also the option for mouse graphics so if you select that you can see that there is a backlight to your mouse wherever your mouse goes over and it's a nice little highlight. I don't really like that option so I leave it off. 
And then you have the other option right here, which is graph match style. So if you select that, then your graph will automatically update to whatever the style that you have selected is. Now the last style that we have is the classic style. And the classic style is from version 3 backwards. So if you like the look of version 3, you can always go right back to it. And it also has the same functionality as far as clicking off of the menu. For instance, with the light style and the dark style, you can select different things that are behind the window. So for instance, before I was able to select all this. In the classic window, it goes back to the classic settings, the default for Excel, which will not let you select anything else other than the open window. So that's why I like having the light option on. That way you can go back and select different things behind the window that you currently have open. Just like that. Okay, so that's all the options in the settings. Now let's move over to the layers. And this is going to be the last option that I'm going to cover for today. And the layers are set up to where you can actually customize these layers. We currently have all of our arcs on layer one. So if you remember, we went into the drawing manager in the last video and we selected to have all the arcs on a separate layer. So Whenever you create a new layer or you create an object, you can actually change the layer right up here. And whatever you change this layer to is whatever that object is going to be on. So I'm going to go ahead and make a, another circle right here. And I'm going to make it rather large so we can see it. It's going to be an origin of 0, 0 and a Z value of, I'm going to say negative 5. And then I'm going to have it be 12. That way it's going to be the largest circle on there. And then I'm going to go ahead and hit circle. And as you can see, we have another circle. And I have it select for layer 2. So right now you can see that the name that we're currently on is name 2. And we have the layer colors. If I want to only show the selected layer, all I do is click that. And now only that circle is shown. I can also change that to layer 0, which is going to show everything but the arc. And then I can select layer 1, which is going to show all the arcs. There is another option right here that will allow you to change the colors based on the layer and not the objects. Because right now, colors are based on the objects. You can change this to be colors based on layers. So if you select this, you can now see that the different layers are different colors. And you can change the layer colors by going right in here. Now the layer colors are set up to be whatever the shape colors are. So for instance, layer 0 is set to be the same color as line. And I can change this to whatever color I want. So I can change it to a circle if I want. So layer 0 is now going to be yellow. And I can hit save. And as you can see, layer 0 is now uh, the same color as the circles. But I'm going to change that right back to line. So I'm going to hit save and it's going to go, actually it was rectangle I believe. Okay, there we go. It's going to go right back to the default color of that. So that's how you can change the layer colors. The next option is the layer names. And if we click on the name tab right here with the layers on it, you can see it brings up a window where we have our default names and we also have our worksheet names. Now the default names are the default names for your computer. You can change these to anything you want them to be and they will always be the default on the computer. The worksheet names are names specifically for that worksheet in that Excel document. So if you want to have your default layer names right here being layer 1, for instance, I can go ahead and hit save, and now all my default layers for layer 1 every time I make a new layer is going to be layer 1. However, I can also change this one to layer 0 and hit save, and now my layer zeros are going to be called layer zeros. So if I select layer 0 on there, you can see that now my name is layer 0. Okay, thank you all very much for watching. I hope that you have enjoyed this video. In the next video, we're going to be going over some of the automations that you can do with Excel Draw. 
if you like this video, go ahead, leave us a thumbs up, give us a comment, let us know what you thought about the video. If you'd like to see anything else, go ahead, let us know. If you did like this video and you like to keep watching for the rest of the Excel Draw documentation, go ahead and subscribe to us. We will be covering all of the functions and features inside of Excel Draw version 4 in the next few days. So please go ahead and subscribe to us so you don't miss any of the upcoming features for it. Thank you all very much for watching.